Fans Canals here, and today I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the Bush Light LA Clash, and also this is officially the return of my NASCAR race review series. So yeah, so let's get this started for the first race review of the year. So as we know, Joey Logano won the first ever Clash at the LA Coliseum, and he's now uh, won the Clash for 2022. I mean. Overall, I would say this was a great success for NASCAR and the fans here because this race overall, I thought I thought it was really good. I mean, yeah, I mean, just I would think NASCAR did a great job preparing this race, and I like how the track was, and yeah, but I mean, just yep, but yeah, but I mean, just that's just that there. So yeah, and we have our top five right here, which my fair driver Cowboy says second. Austin Dillon in third, Eric Jones fourth, and Kyle Larson fifth. So yeah, we're also going to talk about the heat races and the last chance qualifiers in this one too. So yeah, so I mean this race here, it relatively remained clean here for the main events here. I mean of course we had Pitbull and Ice Cube at, at the track performing songs. Like Ice Cube was, in, is there, was there at the halftime point. But yeah, and, and Pitbull was, like, at the start of it. So yeah, but I mean, just, yep. But I mean, overall, though, this race was really good, though. I mean, yeah, I mean, I am kind of disappointed Cowboys didn't win, but I'm okay with that since I, I'm a fan of Logano, for now at least. But yeah, but I mean, I mean, there was not, there was a few incidents, though. I mean, like, Hamlin, Briscoe, and Reddick all had issues around the same time. And, um, uh, Blaney had issues at one point. Stenhouse got spun, and Haley collided with the wall and wrecked his car there. So, yeah, but, I mean, but there was not that many instances, though. I mean, on the last lap, Truex and McDowell spun out. But I don't really know what happened there because I don't think I saw any replays. Because, of course, I was watching it on TV. But, yeah, but, I mean... Yeah, so, I mean, that's just that there, but yeah, but I mean, now about the heat races, though, I mean, they were really good, I mean, the the last, the second last chance qualifier was really wacky in it, I mean, I mean, Kyle Busch, Tyler Reddick, Justin Haley, and Joey Logano all won the heat races, um, Denny Hamlin won the first last chance qualifier, and about the second one here, um, uh, yeah, Tyler Reddick actually crossed the line first. I mean, no, Ty Dillon, actually. Sorry about that. Ty Dillon crossed the line first in the second last chance qualifier, but he was disqualified at the end because he jumped the re and jumped the start of the restart there, which that's actually a penalty. So he was not granted a spot. And instead, Priest was given the win in, in last chance qualifier race two. So yeah, so I mean, just... So yeah, and like, and I believe in the first last chance qualifier race, Amarola got wrecked by Gilliland. So yeah, but that was pretty unfortunate there. I mean, this I'm de I'm definitely guessing this is not the way Amarola wants to start his final season in NASCAR since this will be his last year in the Cup Series. But yeah, but I mean, still that was unfortunate there. And my pick to win this race, Alex Bowman did not advance because he got caught into a wreck in the second last chance qualifier. So, yeah, but I mean, basically now I changed my pick for the main event, and basically it was either Larson or Elliott. I was picking those two, since they were running really well all weekend, but yeah, I mean, they did well, I mean, Chase spun um, in the main event, but yeah, but I mean, just still, I mean, I mean, like, he was still able to finish the race, though. I forgot where he finished, but yeah, but I mean... Yeah, so, I mean, although, I mean, this race, though, was really good. I mean, I mean, I definitely like how the and NASCAR prepared the LA Coliseum for this race. I mean, they did, a re they did a really good job on it, and, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really mind if the Clash stays in the LA Coliseum, and nor would I not mind if it's, like, in the All-Star race. I mean, I know uh, the All-Star race is currently at, at my one of my hometowns, but I wouldn't mind if they moved it there. I mean, even though I like Texas Motor Speedway, just because that track meant, meant uh, something to me. But yeah, but I mean, 
that's just my opinion there, but I mean, yeah, so I mean, overall though, I mean, we'll see what uh, what they'll do eventually, I mean, I mean, I would love to see maybe the LA Coliseum do something else for NASCAR, but I don't know what that will, uh, that will be eventually, but we'll have to wait and see, yeah, I'm about that, but yeah, but I mean, just, yep, so yeah, but I mean, just, overall, I mean, this is a really good race on me, I'm glad NASCAR is back. Yeah, I mean, it's just great to know that my favorite sport is back. So, yeah, but I mean, just, yep, but I mean, so, yep, but I mean, in two weeks, though, the Daytona 500 will be coming, but there's also the dual races to get done. So, yeah, but I mean, I will be doing the race reviews for the dual races when that comes. And, yeah, and I'll still be doing race reviews for all the races this year. So, yep, so race reviews are officially back after a two-month break due to no racing for two months for NASCAR. I mean, I didn't feel like doing a race review on that F1 race I did a race reaction on, nor not the Rolex 24. But yeah, but I mean, just... Yeah, but I mean... But overall, though, I I did like this race, though, with a Gen, 6, a Gen 7 car. I mean, my first impressions on this car, I overall like it. I mean, I mean, I just like it, but I mean... In my opinion, though, since now there's one lug nut, it make it honestly feels like the wheel can fall off easier. Um, since now there's just one lug nut, um, it just makes it like when you collide, when someone crashes into the wall, the wheel could fall off. I mean, that's uh, that's why I feel like right there, like that's just one concern I have with the lug, uh, with the one uh, piece lug nut. But yeah, but I mean, just that's just my thing right there, but. Overall, though, I mean, I really like this car, though. Cannot wait to see what it'll bring this year, especially with the 670 horsepower package. But, yeah, but, I mean, yep. I feel like, honestly, this is going to be a good year for NASCAR, but we'll see what this year will have in store here. But already, though, with this Gen, uh, Gen 7 car, it's already making teams competitive, like Colleg. Ripper Racing was a little competitive in practice. Front Row Motorsports, basically the same. I mean, basically... This Gen 7 car is really going to help the competition here. And, I mean, who knows how it will perform at the Bristol Dirt Race, but we'll find out about that, though. So, yeah, but, I mean, just... But, yeah, once again, though, really good race here. I mean, we'll see if the LA Coliseum will be able to host the Clash again next year, but we'll just see. But, yeah, so, I mean, just... But I can't wait, though, for the Daytona 500. I mean... Hopefully that'll be a good race though compared to last year where it was not the best, but yeah, but I mean just and and yeah, and stay tuned for more videos to come. I mean, I'll catch a train later this week. I mean, I may have heard UP 1943 is here in Texas, but I don't know where it is, but I may have heard it maybe coming this week, but if not, then I'll still get a random train. But stay tuned for more videos to come though. I mean, no streamer events are planned for this week, but I'll eventually plan, plan one, and yeah, but I mean, just, so yeah, so, hope you guys understand it there, and I also ordered some new NASCAR diecast, so, possibly stay tuned for our diecast unboxing video about that, so yeah, so, I mean, I guess that's just all I have to say here, and still, stay tuned for more race reviews to come this year, so yeah, so anyways, thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys later.